In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the right Python environment for you. So a lot of people coming from like an R background who are switching to Python, they're very familiar with something like R Studio, and then it's common to ask, well, what IDE do I use for Python? Well, I'm going to show you exactly what I use and what I recommend depending on what you're trying to do and what your experience level with Python is. So if that sounds good to you, tap the like button to this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, then let's get started. So if you're somebody who's brand new to Python, maybe you want to just get started doing a quick ad hoc analysis. Maybe you just want to learn a little bit of basic functionality and you're sort of intimidated by setting up a development environment. I would really recommend getting started with Anaconda. The reason for that is this is going to be the absolute simplest, least overhead way to get started writing Python code. So you're going to go over here to anaconda.com slash download and you're going to see this download link down here. Now, I'm using a Windows for this, but there are additional installers for Mac or for Linux. You're going to click download and it's going to kick off uh, downloading the installer. Once we get that installer downloaded and opened up, we're just going to move through it, install just for you, pick a destination folder. The one thing I would change here is I would add Anaconda 3 to your path environment variable that is going to make things easier for you later. We're going to go ahead and click install and now this process takes a little bit of time so we're going to come back when we're done. Now once you've got Anaconda Navigator open, scroll down here to Jupyter Lab and let's launch that. Now Anaconda is a full platform with a ton of applications on it and for what we're doing here either Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook will work. I personally prefer the layout that you get in Jupyter Lab, but either one will work. Once that launches, go under here to Python 3 under the notebook, and we're ready to write Python code. I'm gonna start with a simple hello world statement. And look at that, it works. So we could check our Python version. To do that, you're gonna do exclamation point, Python dash dash version. And we find that we're running Python 3.11.5. And notice I did not install anything else on my machine other than Anaconda Navigator. And already all this stuff is good to go. So you can run this command pip freeze. And this is going to show you all the packages that you have in your environment. So you'll see a lot of really basic core fundamentals that a lot of people use for Python programming. All this stuff is already set up. It's good to go. You don't have to do anything with it. So if we want to just confirm that, just do import pandas as PD, do that. And we're ready to go with any kind of functionality from pandas. So for a lot of people working in Anaconda using Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks, that might be all that you need. So I personally use Jupyter Notebooks all the time. If I'm working on like a complicated script that somebody else wrote, I need to understand what it's doing, how the data is changing as it's going through a pipeline of functionality. Sometimes I'll just copy the code into here, break it down into little chunks, run some head statements and just see what's going on with the data. And then, then you can even share that with somebody else. That may be all that you need, but there's definitely going to be some limitations in the things that you're able to do using strictly uh, Jupyter. So that's where you want to have a good text editor where you can run Python scripts locally. Um, that's where I would recommend Visual Studio Code. So there's a ton of different Python text editors out there. There's PyCharm, there's Emacs, there's Vim. Visual Studio Code is my personal favorite and the one that I would recommend using. So we're gonna to go to download up here and get started. Next, I'm gonna show you how to get started in Visual Studio Code and how to set up a virtual environment. Before we do that though, there is one important step where if you don't do this, you're very likely to run into an error. So you wanna to go to Windows PowerShell and you wanna run as an administrator. So it may give you a pop-up window, get your terminal over here, and we're going to run the command set dash execution policy remote signed. 
again, if we don't do this, it's going to try and activate a virtual environment later using PowerShell. And if we don't do this, it's not gonna work. So you wanna run either Y or A, and then we're good to go. Now we're ready to get started with Visual Studio Code or VS Code. So the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is this tab on the side that looks like a bunch of windows. This is the extensions tab. And the first thing you're gonna to have to do is install the Python extension. So you should see an install a button over here if you don't have it already, get that set up. Now, Visual Studio Code offers us plenty of different extensions that we can use, many of which make our programming experience a lot easier. So in particular, a couple that I recommend, uh, Black is a really good one right here. This one is really good for formatting and for styling, so we could install that one. Another one that I really recommend is Flake 8. So this one is really good for, uh, for linting. So this one will provide a number of recommendations like you have lines which are going over 79 characters. Maybe you should wrap them in multiple lines instead of one long line so it makes the code uh, good style and easy to read. Now let's take VS Code for a spin. We're gonna go up to New File, and if you installed that Python extension earlier, you should see an option here for a Python file. So we're going to give this a name, just call it Test, and let's make it super basic. It's just also going to be a basic Hello World statement. We're going to go up here and we're going to run that. So the interpreter that I'm using right now actually came directly from that Anaconda installation. If you look down here in the corner, it's Python 3.11.5 with base conda. Again, that comes directly from that installation that I did earlier from Anaconda. So that's in my environment variables. VS Code is able to find that. Obviously, you're more than welcome and able to, f to use different versions of Python, uh, download, install those, and use different interpreters and versions of Python. But either way, uh, this successfully executed, we return to Hello World down here. So VS Code is going to be a great environment for you to work in to run and maintain scripts very easily style your scripts to make them look nicer and just collaborate with developers easier and push things and pull things from GitHub. But as you start working on multiple projects, you're going to want to start setting up what's known as virtual environments. Now this is gonna be the last topic for this tutorial and a virtual environment sounds like something super sophisticated, but it's actually a really simple concept. The whole idea is you might work on different projects with completely different sets of dependencies. So just making an example up here, one project may require Pandas version 1.2.5 and another project requires Pandas 1.8.3, just as an example. And so once you start changing your environment around to accommodate Pandas 1.8.3, other stuff is going to start breaking and not working. So really what a virtual environment is, is a completely self-contained environment that's specific to that project. So we're gonna set one of those up here. Now to get started building our virtual environment, we need a project folder to work out of. So I'm just gonna create a new folder on my desktop here. I'm gonna call it Richard Project. Now in VS Code, we're gonna go ahead and open that. So you're gonna go up here to file, open folder. Let's find that project folder we created. And now that's our working project folder in VS Code. Next, we're gonna go up here to our terminal. We're gonna open up a new terminal and you're going to run the command python m venv. And now this is where you give it a name I'm just gonna call it Richard ENV. And now we have this Richard ENV virtual environment inside of our project folder now. Now let's create a new script, create a new file. 
This is going to be another simple hello world script. I'm going to save it as Richard script. Again, just a simple hello world print statement. Before anything though, just to get inside this virtual environment, you want to go over and kill that terminal that we were working out of. And let's go ahead and run this script here. You'll notice down here, this activate.ps1 PowerShell script was run. So if we hadn't done that step earlier with PowerShell, this part would probably fail for you. But notice we're working out of Richard ENV now. Our virtual environment is all set up. So now if you wanna go ahead and download packages in here, you can do that. This is an entirely self-contained thing that's not going to interfere with other projects that you work on. So that concludes this tutorial on setting up a Python environment. Now again, I wanna stress, there's no one size fits all solution to this. It all depends on your experience and comfort level and just how you prefer to work with Python. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and leave me a comment down below and just let me know what your favorite uh, text editor and environment for Python is. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.